Okay guys, so the purpose of today's video today, we're going to discuss rebar, wire mesh, and fiber concrete. When you need it and when you may not need it, we'll discuss job site requirements, plans, and if you may not require it at all. So, let's get into it. Now we wait for the trucks. That's the only thing I like about a box of Joe on the Joe. You get coffee all day instantly. So instant wheat. It's about 58 degrees today. have done was should have a 20 20 foot long rod instead of five foot coming out all the way along here and then the rod coming from there all the way along where they overlap you tie it then you put the wire this gives you a nice clean cut piece of rebar straight across and what you're doing is you're actually transferring the weight over the entire length of the rod. Rather than having all this pressure sitting on a five foot piece of steel, you have all that pressure sitting on a 30 foot wide piece of steel or however wide your slab is. So Carlos, do you think we should have put the rebar all the way across or just the five feet? What do you think? The five feet is fine over here. The foot. To our ground. Okay. So the reason why I wanted the rebar to span the length of the slab was because they're going to have delivery trucks, high lows, and heavy pallets being loaded and unloaded in on this slab. It's a commercial bakery. So while the theory is not wrong with the five foot bars and the wire spanning it, I would have dreaded have the rod spanning the entire length supporting the slab. Now you could also make the argument that the wire mesh is going to do the same thing because it creates that grid pattern that gives the slab its strength. So while I would have liked to take it a step further, the method in that slab is not really would classify as you're doing it wrong. However, I would much rather go deeper into the steel because for me, an extra $100 on a project like this would not even scratch the surface of the budget. So to me, that's my opinion. Now let's take a look at a slab that we poured with sauna tubes that I designed. And Okay, so see how the rods span the entire length of the slab in a grid pattern. And even in the sauna tubes, you see we have rebar bent coming out of the tube. We actually built a grid cage, lowered it into the sauna tube, and tied it all together. We also drilled all of those rods into the wall to help support it there. However, there are six sonnet tubes in this slab that go all the way down to virgin ground. Okay, so you're probably wondering now, well, what do I want in my slab? Do I want the fiber concrete, wire, rebar, or all three? Well, the truth of the matter is the fiber concrete is a great product if they sell it in your area. Now, in my area, it's not very commonly used. It's not very popular to order. So for me, the options would be regular concrete with steel. Now, now, what is rebar really good for? What is wire mesh really good for? So wire mesh, you're not gonna use it in footings or walls. There's just really no reason for it to be there. Now, if you're going to use rebar, what rebar's claim to fame is, it really spans 
the weight of the concrete over a large area. So the wire mesh doesn't really do that. The wire mesh is there that if the concrete should crack or develop a small crack, it stays that way. You don't get those big jagged cracks like this or tripping hazards. It holds all the concrete together. That's why you really want the wire to be in the middle of the slab so it could do the most effective job of holding everything together. If it's at the bottom, while it will help, it's not really doing as much as it could be doing for you. So the slab that we saw in the original video, the first one, um, now that's being spread over a 30 by 40 area, but my thing is, is that it's going to have central weight placed on certain areas just because the way the high lows or the trucks drive. So for, my, for me, in my opinion, I would have said that you should have absolutely put the rebar the whole way just to help the slab span that weight. So if the ground should shift or it should move or should settle or develop a soft spot over time, the slab would be unaffected by it rather than relying on the ground to constantly hold it. Now, if you don't have wire mesh or you don't want to use wire for whatever reason, concrete just laying a bar, just laying like this or like this, is really not doing anything. What gives rebar its strength in concrete is the cross. It's the grid pattern like this that's going to give it its strength. So, well, you shouldn't really put a crook in like this. This is what's giving concrete strength. That's why the wire is in small six by six inch boxes. So that's what's giving the rebar the strength to hold everything together. So when you build that box pattern, that grid is what's holding it all together. So if you're pouring a driveway, do you want both? Well, in my honest opinion, you wouldn't be wrong if you put both, but in certain circumstances, in most circumstances, you're really not going to have the room in the slab to do both. So if you were going to tie a grid pattern, now you're going to have rebar overlapping like this, plus the thickness of the wire mesh. And if your slab is only four or six inches, it's kind of getting a little lost in the translation. So you really want to go with one or the other. Now, I have done driveways where we've put both. So the second slab that you saw us pouring, that was for a large staircase. So what we did was, rather than putting big walls all the way down, because the walls would have been very, very high, we put sauna tubes. So there were six tubes in all. And what you do is, you do the same thing like I just said. You build a grid pattern out of rebar. you got to cut all the steel. Those were two-foot sauna tubes. So you cut all the steel, you tie a grid together, and you sink it into the sauna tube. You just point it right in there. And then you're going to tie steel and bend it like this up into that slab. And that's going to give all of the strength and center all of the power of the sauna tube into that slab. You're connecting it all together. Even though it's a monolithic pour, which also gives concrete most of its strength, you're also connecting it all with the steel. That slab will absolutely positively never move because you've connected everything. So if that sonnet tube should move, then your slab may move. But in theory, your sonnet tube should be on rock hard ground, so you should not have that dilemma. Okay, guys, so the one last thing that I want to cover with steel reinforcement is if you're going to be pouring concrete, driveway, anything finished, between two structures, such as a house and a wall, wall and a wall, house and house, etc., you're not going to want to drill rebar into the walls. And the reason being is because you're going to lock that concrete in. You're going to wedge it like this. And if the concrete cannot shift side to side, it's going to crack in the weakest spot, which is going to be right down the middle. You'll get a big, ugly, ugly crack every single time. It happened to us on a job already where the customer made us drill the rebar and overlap it like this, cracked in the center. So what you're going to want to do to combat that situation is, first of all, you'll use wire mesh uh, in that scenario because to use the rebar, it wouldn't be cost effective, it's more labor intensive, and you're getting the same result with the wire. So in this instance, even if you're on iffy, unsettled ground, I would still go with the wire mesh in this one circumstance just because you can't drill rebar into the walls. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, I recommend, homosote expansion joints. 
So you're going to put a void cap on top of them because you're not going to be able to saw, chop saw cut them later. So what you do is you put the void cap on the top so you can just peel the top and cork it. You're going to want to seal that joint that you're creating. You don't want to leave it open because water can always penetrate it and then it could cause a problem for the foundation later on. Even if you're between two walls, just cork it anyway. I mean, the cost is minimal in the uh, scope of the job. Uh, and the reason being why you want the joint to go all the way to the bottom is because you don't want that concrete to get underneath it like this. Because then you're creating the same situation as if you put nothing at all. You're wedging it. So it's getting wedged from underneath like this. So what you want to do is you want that expansion joint. If you, Let's just say, in it, for instance, you're doing a four-inch slab. Double up on the expansion joints. They're, I think, three and a half. So double up on them. So this way, your stone base aggregate is still touching that expansion joint. This way, the concrete, when, it, when the cream leaches into that stone, it won't penetrate the stone and get underneath the expansion joint like this. Even if the cream gets under there, you don't want that to happen. You want to make it that that joint stays flush and your concrete driveway or whatever you're pouring stays just like this so it could shift up and down as the ground dictates. This way you'll avoid cracking later. And remember, you always have to put some type of expansion joint, whether you saw cut or use pressure treated, home and sew joints, concrete needs expansion joints. So even if you put the joints on either side and you think you're good, you're still gonna need to put regular expansion joints, no matter what. Okay, so in summary, the fiber concrete, if you can get it, get it. It's definitely a step above regular mixed ready mix. Uh, if you're going to use the wire mesh, uh, you have to be on undisturbed, unsettled ground, ground that's not going to sink later on in life. Rebar is great for spanning good to bare ground or even bare ground altogether, and it's also great for weight. So if you're going to be placing heavy objects or trucks, forklifts, whatever, bobcats, Anything with serious weight onto that concrete, you're going to want the rebar. The wire, that the claim to fame for it is that if the concrete should crack, it'll hold the crack in place. It's not necessarily giving you strength on a side-to-side -side basis. So spanning ground, you're going to want the rebar. For extra strength, rebar. If you're just worried about cracking and it's a typical driveway or just typical walkway, go with the wire 100%. Okay? And uh, also, when you're going to be, if you're pouring a walkway or a sidewalk or something that's not going to see heavy traffic, yes, you can get away with not putting steel in. I personally, myself, will always recommend putting at least a wire in it because it's cheap insurance. But if your customer does not want to go for it or it's not in the budget for the project, then yes, you can get away without putting it. But make sure you put control lines and expansion joints in it. So this way, so as it shifts, it can if it's going to crack, it'll crack at the joint or it'll crack in the control line that you put in it. Guys, I hope this video has helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or agree or disagree, please leave them below in the comment section. Uh, as always, please be safe, take care, and I will talk to you guys soon.